Welcome to Geometry Review. This video is on transformations and symmetry. A translation is one type of transformation, which is how we can change a figure. And what a translation means, it means to take a figure and to slide it. Okay, so translation, you can remember slide by the SL in translation. In a translation, each point is moved in the same exact way to create a new figure. There is no change to shape or orientation. So you're not going to change the shape. You're not going to change the size. You're not going to change how the figure is turned. The only thing that is going to change is the location. That is the only thing that changes when we go ahead and do a translation. So here is an example of a translation, and I want you to describe the transformation that occurred from A, B, C, D to A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime. So A, B, C, D is here. We want to describe what happens to get to the other thing. So to get from A to A prime, what we do, we can just see how we moved. We counted down one, two, three, four. So we go down four. And to the right, one, two, three, four, five, six. Down four to the right, six. So what we did, we took x, point x, y, and we took x and we added six to it. We took y and we subtracted four from that value. So that is how we change. So every point in A, B, C, D went to the right six and down four. So every point went right six and down four. You can even see this if you go ahead and look at the coordinates of the point. This is negative five, positive two is the original point for A, negative five, positive two. The original or the new point for A prime is one, negative two. So if you can compare negative 5 to positive 1, you added 6. If you compare positive 2 to negative 2, you had to subtract 4. So that is the rule for this translation. A reflection means to flip. So if you are completing a reflection, you are going to flip. You're going to flip your figure over a set line or over a set axis. The problem will always tell you what you are going to flip over. You can think about your shape as a mirror about the line of reflection. So it's the same on both sides of the line of your reflection. Okay. There will be a change in location because it will change what quadrant it is in potentially depending on where exactly it is located. And there will be a change in orientation. It won't be turned exactly the same way, but it will be mirrored but there will be no change in size. No change in size, no change in general shape. So that is a reflection. There are a few common reflections. You can reflect something across the x-axis. So if we take this little triangle that we have here, the x-axis is our horizontal axis, the y-axis is our vertical axis. So if we are flipping across the x-axis, we are flipping across this axis, and our points are going to be in blue. So basically, we can just count down to the x-axis. So from this red point, you would go down two, which means on the other side, we go down two. So that's our first point. This other point is one, two, three, four, five away. So one, two, three, four, five. That's its new location. And the other one, one, two, three. One, two, three, four. So one, two, three, four. So that is a reflection across the x-axis. Now, if we actually look at the coordinates, the original coordinate is negative three, positive two, and this new one is negative three, negative two. So what you might notice is when you go across the x-axis, your x value is going to stay the same. The only thing that changes is your y value, and it becomes negative. So the point x, y is going to go to x, negative y. 
A similar thing is going to happen when you go across the y-axis. The y-axis is your vertical axis. So if we are going across the y-axis, your y-coordinate is not going to change. The only thing that's going to happen is that your x-coordinate is going to change sign. So we would go from negative 3, positive 2, to positive 3, positive 2. So that would be our new location. Or we could count to our reflection line. So the point up here, we count 2 to the line, so 2 away is over here. And then the other point, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that would be a reflection of the red shape about the y-axis. Another common reflection would be a reflection across the line y equals x. So that is the black line drawn here. It has slope of 1, y intercept of 0. This rule basically tells you what to do. If you want to figure out what x is going to be, go to your equation. x is equal to y. So x is going to end up as y. y is going to end up as x. So the original coordinate for this bottom point is negative 3, 2. So our new location for it is positive 2, negative 3. So that is your new location for that point. I think that's generally the easiest way to do it. The other coordinate is negative 2, 5. So your new location for it would be positive 5, negative 2. And then the other one. is negative 6, positive 4, so it's at 4, 6, 4, negative 6. And that would be that shape across the line y equals x. So that is a reflection. Here is an example of a reflection problem. Quadrilateral T, U, V, W is shown, is a quadrilateral that is shown. If T, U, V, W is reflected across the line Y equals X, what are the coordinates of V prime? So, we have T, U, V, W. We want to find the coordinates of V prime. We know it's going across the line Y equals X. So, point X, Y is going to go to Y, X. In order to find the coordinates for V prime, we have to first find the coordinates for V. So V has the coordinates 3, negative 8, which means that V prime will have coordinates negative 8, 3. So that would be our answer. So D is the answer to this problem. That is a reflection. A rotation. You can think about a rotation as a turn. Rotation has T's in it for turn. If they do not tell you a direction, your rotation will be in the counterclockwise direction. So if they don't tell you a direction, you go counterclockwise. Generally, you will do turns in terms of 90 degrees. 90 degrees is one turn. 180 degrees is two turns. 270 degrees is three turns. 360 degrees is four turns. However, if you're doing four turns, you're pretty much doing zero turns. When you are doing a rotation, there will be a change in location and a change in orientation. So your triangle will be turned differently or your shape, and it will be in a different spot, but there is going to be no change in size. One of your general rotation rules that you're going to see, a 90 degree counterclockwise rotation about the origin, the point XY will go to the point negative Y, X. So the order of the points changes, and your first one is going to become negative. Now, if you do that again, if you do a 90 degree counterclockwise rotation twice, that's the same thing as a 180 degree rotation. So for example, if I just put a point on here, and I put this point, I'm going to say that is point 3, 2. The really easy way to do a counterclockwise rotation is to just count. You would go over 3 and up 2. If we want to take this and rotate it, we can think about rotating the weird little L that we just made. The 3 is going to go from this horizontal x-axis to the positive vertical y. 
So it's just going to, that whole thing is going to rotate. So this would be a positive three. That would be a two in regards to counting. So our new coordinate for that point is negative two, three, which follows the rule exactly. So that would be a 90 degree counterclockwise rotation about the origin. Here's an example. You have triangle ABC and triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. I would like for you to figure out which of the answer choices represents the rotation or the transformation that occurred. So please pause and check your answer. The answer is not A because we are not sliding ABC across the X axis. If we were to translate it across the X axis, then we would end up in quadrant three or four. It is not a reflection across the Y. If it was a reflection across the Y axis, then point B would be located right here if it was a reflection across the Y. If it was a reflection across the X axis, then point C would be located down here. And that's not there as well. So the only potential option is a 90 degree clockwise rotation about the origin. And the reason why we can see this is if we have AB here, if we rotate it around the origin, AB is now this direction. So nothing is flipped, it is just turned. And we just only move one quadrant, so that's how we know we went 90 degrees clockwise. Another way they could say it is they could just say that it's 270 degrees counterclockwise. The final transformation is a dilation. A dilation is a change in size. So if you're dilating something, you are changing it in size. If you multiply all of your coordinates by a constant, it will increase the size. So multiplying the coordinates by a constant increases the size. If you are dividing the coordinates by a constant, it's going to decrease the size. So, if we take our coordinates in this graph, and we'll say we're going to go x, y, and we are going to basically double them. We would go 2x, 2y. So, I'm going to make it bigger. My original point here is negative 3, positive 2. So multiplying that by 2 would be negative 6, positive 4. So that point would move down here. The point up here is negative 2, 5. So multiplying that would make it negative 4, 10. So that's its new location. And the other point... is negative 6, positive 4, so its new location is negative 12, 8. So it would be there. So this new shape is our larger, slightly off shape because of my bad. Actually, uh, this bottom point, see how it's not the same shape? That's because I did not plot my red point in the correct spot. So my red point, I plotted it negative, negative, where it should be negative 6, positive 4. So it should be there. And that is more of the shape that we want. Sorry about that. So that would be an example of dilating the shape, making it bigger. That's the nice thing about transformations. You know if you make a mistake that something's not going to look right, so you can go back and double check. Two other things that we have are symmetry. We can be symmetric about a point. You have an object has point symmetry if it looks the same upside down. So all you would do is turn your object. So here are some examples of objects that have point symmetry. We have an ace of spades. If we rotate this upside down, it's still going to look exactly the same. Actually, this one's not going to look exactly the same because we have this spade in the middle. So watch. If it's this way, since it doesn't work, this is actually a counterexample. 
We think it would be the same, but when we actually do it, watch the spade. The spade is not the same. So this actually does not, does not have point symmetry. A king would. Here we have an H. If we rotate our H, it's still an H upside down. If we rotate our I, it's still an I upside down. Okay. If you have line symmetry, then you are symmetric about a line. So it would look the same on both sides of a line. It's mirrored on the line. The object can be folded along the line of symmetry and match up exactly. So you can take whatever your thing is, you can fold along the line of symmetry and the parts will match up exactly. So here we have some examples. We have a domino. If we fold along this horizontal line, it's going to match up exactly. If we fold along the vertical line, it's going to match up exactly. H is the same way. It has two lines of symmetry. I has one. It's only horizontal. And A has one, and it is vertical. Finally, a tessellation is a repeated copy of a figure. It can be a polygon. Generally, it will be, but we are going to do things where it's not sometimes. And it is a figure that completely fills a plane without leaving open space or overlapping. So something will tessellate the plane if it's going to completely fill the plane. Okay. A polygon, closed, straight sides, 2D figure, will tessellate a plane if its interior angle is a factor of 360 degrees. Because then you can put a bunch of them together. So, for example, here we have a regular tessellation because all of your pure tessellation, all of your shapes are the same, and they are polygons. These angles all add up to 360, so we work here. Over here, we turn the polygons a little bit. They're not regular polygons, so it's semi-pure, and we have some trapezoids where these angles are going to add to 360, so therefore it's going to tessellate the plane. So, the things that you need to know in regards to transformations and symmetry are the types of transformations, which are tessellation, reflection, rotation, dilation, the types of symmetry, point symmetry, and line symmetry, and in general, what a tessellation is.